The Open Door Baptist Podcast features the insightful preaching and teaching of our senior pastor, Jason Murphy. It also comprises of special messages from a number of guest speakers throughout the year. The purpose of this podcast is to be a witness in our community, to encourage others to grow in their relationship with God through the preaching and teaching of His Word, and to serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. Baptist College, their church there, North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara. Pastor Jack Treber has been there for 40 years, started the college as they mentioned 19 years ago. And uh, I encourage you to stop by that back table, buy some CDs, look at some of the material. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. That was a blessing. All right. Turn your Bible, if you would. Go to 1 John chapter number 4. 1 John chapter number 4. I'm going to preach fast this morning, so you listen fast this morning, and then we'll all get out, uh, not on time anyway, as it is. So 1 John chapter 4, uh, thank you for your patience again, as I mentioned. I, I really think that the, the air is actually kicking on. I feel it a little bit, which is encouraging, and uh, that'll be a blessing for tonight. 1 John chapter number 4, and we're going to read just a couple verses here, and then we'll have a word of prayer. Notice if you would, verse number one in First John chapter 4. The Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they, be, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby ye know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, where you have heard that it should come. And notice what John is telling us here at the end of verse number two, he said, or verse number three, and even now already is it in the world. Look up here for just a minute. What John is saying here clearly is that the spirit of Antichrist, people that were already spreading heresy were prevalent and were emerging, if you will, in the time that this epistle was written. And may I submit to you this morning, so much the more I believe today that we need to be sober, we need to be vigilant, we need to have discernment and discretion that we can learn, as John is telling us here, to try the spirits. In the song that they were singing, I think it was the second song, you heard them say uh, very clearly in the beginning of that song that many say that there are multiple ways, I'm paraphrasing here, to heaven. But may I, may I submit to you today, if, if you believe the Bible, which is a rarity today, I believe, I mean, you believe it cover to cover, it's inerrant, it's infallible, you believe it, you don't correct it, you believe it, then you know that there's only one way to heaven. And that's not a, I understand it's not a popular thing, I, I get that. Uh, I heard recently some modern day talk show host stating, uh, this is what I read, I didn't hear it because I don't watch it, it's trash, but she said, you need to stop, I gave it away a little bit, she said, you need to stop clinging to your old rugged cross. That's an indictment, don't you think? And pretty sad. And that's, there's a spirit associated with that. People are becoming more and more emboldened these days as they do the best they can to discredit the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. And today I'd like to preach a message titled, Being Vigilant, Vigilant for Such a Time as This. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for this time and thank you for your word Thank you for its clarity. And thank you for this church. Thank you for the people that are here this morning, those who were in the early service uh, that are here today. And thank you for the good music that we've already heard from the choir. What a blessing. Thank you for the special music from Golden State Baptist College. Thank you for that ministry. And as we take the next few minutes, we are asking that the Holy Spirit of God would have free course, that we would have discernment in the scriptures today that we could learn and draw, draw closer to you, 
We are cognizant of the fact that all is vain unless the Holy Spirit comes down and meets with us. So we are dependent upon you. I ask that you'd break up the fallow ground and help people today to receive the engrafted word that they might draw closer to you and that all of us would leave today with having a, a little bit more discernment, be a little bit more sober, a little bit more vigilant as we consider the spirit of Antichrist, which we see arising so much the more today. I pray if there's somebody in this service that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that today would be the day they trust the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ as their only hope for heaven. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and amen. Be vigilant. I told the 945 service, uh, not as an apology, because you never want to apologize for the Word of God, but this is not a, a positive message. It, uh, not that I'm going to be caustic, but it's just, it's a little bit more of a, a message that is a, is a warning. And sometimes, you know what we need? We need a stark warning. We need to be reminded of the spirit of the day in which we live. And so we don't, we're not blown about by every wind of doctrine because somebody says that they're of Christ and yet we find out that they believe that Christ is a God and not the God, then you know there's a spirit associated with that. And sad to say what I'm observing and as far as our landscape changing, at least in this country, no doubt in other parts of the world, that Christians, for whatever reason, are just a little bit more gullible today, having a little bit less discernment. And they're not trying the spirits, which we're admonished to do in First John. And now, no doubt we know this is applicable and doctrinally uh, very applicable to the Jew going through the tribulation period. That's why you have all the inferences to overcoming and overcoming and overcoming. Listen, if you're saved today, you're not going to get to heaven because you overcome. It's because you're saved by the blood of Christ, as they sing about, and sealed into the day of redemption. You're not going to overcome anything. And if you do overcome, and that's why you're saved, then it's your own works. How would you get to heaven? Well, I overcame. No, you got to heaven because of the finished work of Christ. And so we understand doctrinally. That's why it's important to rightly divide the word of truth to understand what is doctrinally and dispensationally applicable to you today. And speaking of gullible and lack of discernment and people getting misled is their failure to grasp sometimes basic Bible hermeneutics. It doesn't say rightly handle the word of truth. It says rightly divide the word of truth. So be leery of somebody that goes to the Greek and says, no, you ought to rightly handle. Handle and divide are not the same thing. Divide the word of truth. That way you won't get messed up in Matthew 24 and you won't get messed up in 1 John and you won't get up, messed up when it says, you know, if you've got a problem with lust, pluck your eye out. If you've got a problem with stealing, cut your hand off. You don't have to spiritualize it. You know doctrinally who it's addressing. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen? It's all profitable. Even the book of Numbers and the book of Leviticus and 2 Chronicles. People say, no, it's profitable. I read 2 Chronicles every time I want to go to bed put you to sleep. It's a blessing. Amen. Be vigilant for such a time as this. Uh, we often stand amazed at the conditions of our world, but we're told that these days would come. Let's just digress for a minute and think about the landscape of America today. Let's just go back 50 years. Now, I don't go back 100, I'll go back 50 years and look at how the landscape has changed. You can go back 100 years and, and, and as well, and you'll see it so much changed from the moral depravity to the churches in general. And we're going to see some things this morning that I think that's going to be a help to you when we think about discerning and trying the spirits. I believe this, and I told this to the earlier crowd, I believe the stage is being set right now for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it. I don't, I don't just say it for something to say. I believe it in my heart. And I, and I understand from Israel's standpoint, from a numerical standpoint, I understand that aspect. But I'm talking about in the realm of Christianity, a falling away 
of the church. And that's why Paul tells young Timothy, know this, that in the last days perilous times shall come. And men shall be lovers of their own selves. And so on and so on. We know that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the last days some shall depart from the faith. Listen carefully. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And with being as politically correct as I can, because I'm not, but I'll try, when somebody says that there is, that Jesus Christ is a God and not the God, that's a doctrine of a devil. When somebody says you pray to Mary and you don't pray to Jesus Christ or you have to go to a, a mediator other than Jesus Christ, listen carefully, that's a doctrine of a devil. You say, well, that's not real popular. I don't know what else to say. That's why Paul said to the church of Galatians, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Try the spirits. He says, whether they be of God or whether they be of the devil. And I'm going to take it even a little bit step further today as we look at what you would see sometimes in under the banner of Christ, even in a church that maybe on the surface would would have Christian, but on the flip side of it, doesn't preach the gospel, does not in one shape or form but have a copy of the, of the word of God, let alone believe it. You say, is that true? Absolutely. And millions and millions are being led astray by this because they're lacking spiritual discernment. You understand in the last days, Jesus made this statement that if it wasn't for the very elect, the whole world would be destroyed, basically. But for the elect's sake, he, he saved some. So there's going to be sent a strong delusion. Does that make sense? A strong delusion in the latter days. People are going to be led astray. Peter talks about false prophets that will come in and lead people astray. You say, what you're preaching is not popular and you're not going to pastor a really large church if you start preaching on those things because they're not politically correct or they're really hard or it's judgmental or it's condescending. Listen, try the spirits. I'd rather side with God in his word, amen? amen. Try the spirits. The stage is being set. The trump of God could sound at any moment. And listen, we shouldn't be surprised. Did not 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 3 say this? That, that prior to the Lord coming back, there's going to be a falling away first until the man of sin be what? Revealed. So a falling away. And so you say, well, we see the Antichrist. Will we see him rise into power? I'll be, I'll be transparent. I've done a lot of prophecy series. Uh, I don't know the answer of whether or not we'll see. The, some say he's alive today. I know who he is. He's fill in the blank. <laughs> Everybody likes to do that. They think they know who the Antichrist is. We know from Isaiah 14, he's an Assyrian. I, I believe that little horn Daniel talks about is uh, that he will rise out of Syria or of that region. The Holy Spirit led Paul to pen those words as we mentioned in Timothy, in the last days perilous times shall come. Many feel today that things are spiraling out of control and it's true that the depravity of mankind in many respects has sink, sunk to, to, to really new lows. It's at least of what we would observe. But I, I'll tell you this. Man has always been depraved. In the church of Corinth, people say, oh, this is the Laodicean period, bless God. It may be. It may be. the If anything, it's characteristic of the Laodicean period. But what would you go back 2,000 years ago? What would you call the church of Corinth with incest taking place in the church? All kinds of schisms and divisions taking church. And go back to Genesis 6 and the earlier part of Genesis that God flooded the earth because man's thoughts were wicked continually. So man's always been depraved. So keep in mind this morning, if you would, Folks, the child of God, if you're, say, if you're saved, you know the Lord this morning, say amen. amen. You know the Lord. Okay, if that's you, be vigilant. Try the spirits. We have no liberty not to be cognizant of the things that are going on around us. You need to, you need to be savvy to those things. Uh, listen, there's mainstream, mainline denominations 
that once used to hold true to the word of God and the fundamentals of the faith that are not only leaving cardinal doctrines, but standing, not just with an ecumenical bent, forget that, but standing with things that are diametrically opposed to the word of God and the church isn't saying anything about it. I don't mean this church. I mean as a whole. And they're saying, well, we need to take the blood out of the songs. I could tell you right now, denominations, if I said this, and I'm a Bible believer before I am anything. A Bible believer. You say, oh, I can hear, this is a Baptist. I am a Bible believer. John the Baptist was an Old Testament prophet. Okay? I'm a Bible believer. But I'm talking about mainstream denominations that say we've got to remove the blood from the songs because it really, when you sing about the blood, it just really has an offense to it. <laughs> I'm not making this up. You can research it yourself. You don't need to Google it now, but you can do it. And so I could go a step further and bring to light some of the ills that are taking place. And you say, how is this happening? How has this happened under the auspice of Christianity? Because people are failing to try the spirits. When somebody says things, there's three spirits. I don't want to get into the book of Job this morning. Uh, I won't even get into the three spirits and all the things that speak and whatever I'm getting. This is not a rabbit trail. It was a controlled parenthetical, but let's move on. Um, false teachers leading people astray. We must know what the Bible teaches and what we believe and why we believe it. Try the spirits. No shortage of false prophets in our day. If the Lord can, uh, tarries his coming, we're going to see more and more arise. John urges us, folks, that's you, not the person next to you, that's me, urges us to try the spirits. You need to exercise spiritual discernment. You know, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen says, marvel not that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Ministers, smooth talking. I just love the way he speaks. It's amazing, and the music is so great. It's a blessing. I love good music. But when the Bible talks about in Timothy in the last days, that in the end times, people will not endure sound doctrine. Some of you will struggle with a message like this this morning. Listen, why? Why won't they endure in sound doctrine? What will they do? They'll turn to themselves, teachers having itchy ears. They want to just have that warm and the fuzzy, and I'm all for that. I'm for helping people and encouraging people and building up the saints and what have you. But sometimes we just need to kind of snap out of it and say, listen, there's a real devil and there's a real spirit of antichrist. It's not fabricated, it's found in his word. Look in your notes, if you would, uh, and look at this first thought. And I won't be long. I, I really won't because uh, my introduction was a little longer than normal. But notice, if you would, in your bulletin, there's some notes in there. The first admonition we see is we consider being vigilant for such a time as this. Be attentive. Look at verse number one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the... What's the next word? Whether they are of who? Our discernment requires due diligence if we're to overcome spiritual deception. It's a plea. Believe not. He's, he's saying, beloved. It's kind of, you see that. It's kind of like Paul saying, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. And so John is saying, beloved, believe not every spirit. Have you ever went into an airport before or you traveled in certain parts of the country? Or uh, I, I remember being in Egypt and feeling a dark oppression. But you know, I felt the same thing in other parts of the country as well. And even in this country, there's, sometimes there's a spirit. Have you ever, how about this? Have you ever walked into a home where the husband and wife were fighting and you, there was a spirit? Amen? Have you ever had that, any of you? Never you want to admit that you ever followed your... It's true. Try the spirits. Look at verse one again. Beloved, believe not every spirit. John offers a simple yet profound appeal. We can't believe everything we hear or experience in this life. We can't believe it. Pastor Blue said years ago, he was talking to a guy at Costco, and the guy said to him, he said, uh, Pastor Blue, he says, I woke up in the middle of the night and my clock was flashing 12-12. 
Does that mean the Lord's coming back December 12th? He said, no, I think your power went out. <laughs> you don't believe, listen, I mean, you gotta have discernment. You don't cling on to everything. Just because somebody says they're a Christian doesn't mean they believe in what you believe in. Now, we ought to have grace with others. We should never be condescending. We ought to be kind to people. But when deception, that's why they call it deception. See, the devil isn't going to show up with a pitchfork in a red suit and say, hello, I'm here. No, no, no. It's not going to happen. So you have to be able to try the spirits. Simply challenges the believer against being gullible. It needs to be heated today. Today you're being bombarded. I'm being bombarded with many different avenues and mediums that, that come across that would teach a heretical doctrine that would uh, be of the devil to lead you away. And no doubt social media plays a major role in that. And the devil is the prince and the power of the air. So you need to be leery of that. Society and culture have adopted their own set of rules. That's what's taken place. We're challenged against, by many against a literal interpretation of Scripture. A literal interpretation. Now, I, I, I understand a lost person. I understand an unregenerated person saying, I don't believe the Bible is true, or I believe it's a farce. Or, I, I, I understand that from a lost person. But I'm talking, folks, listen, and I'm trying to be graceful as well. I'm talking under the banner of Christianity where people say, I'm just not sure that I believe the Bible is true. I believe some of it's true, but not all of it's true. Okay, then do you, are you saved? Ask them. If they tell you that, say, are you saved? Well, yeah, I'm saved. How do you know you're saved? Well, the Bible says that, you know, if I call upon the name of the Lord, I shall be saved. Well, how do you know that's true? You understand, when you start saying there's one mistake or one problem with the Bible, then how do you know what's right and what's wrong? So you either believe God created the heavens and the earth, the sun and the moon and the stars and gave you the very breath you have to speak and live and breathe right now, that he's capable of preserving his word in an air and infallible form. You take it by faith. But there's people today that are challenging the infallibility of the word of God. And, and, and so therefore, you need to try the spirits. You need to say, if somebody says that, there's a spirit associated with somebody who does not believe. Now, I expect that from lost people, but it's happening under the banner of Christianity. That's my point. Many argue the Bible doesn't hold the same weight today as it did when it was written. And sad to say in the context of Christianity, they say the same thing. I've had somebody tell me before, the Bible's outdated. It was written 2,000 years ago, and so therefore... It can't be relevant today. Really, okay, can't be relevant today. Interesting. So the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Help me out, church. Help me out this morning. Is that relevant? Thou shall not kill. Is that relevant? Thou shall not bear false witness. Is that relevant? Thou shall not commit adultery. Is that relevant? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Is that relevant? A soft answer, turn of the way wrath. Is that relevant? Is that up to date enough? And so the irony of it is they don't even know what they're talking about. There's a spirit associated with that. Your job is to be attentive and to try the spirits. Many today, sad to say on your television set will mock the Bible and mock Christianity. They'll mock the man of God and, and on and on and on. As somebody stated recently that, that uh, it was submitted by somebody writing a Bible and this Bible was put out, um, it's called Yeezy's and, and it, it was a Bible that took uh, Kanye West and, and every time the name God was mentioned, they they inserted the name Kanye West every time the Bible was mentioned, or excuse me, every time God was mentioned, they put in his name. May I be so bold this morning and say this, that's blasphemy. And yet, but he says, I'm a Christian. Can I just say this? Try the spirits. That's what you're admonished to do. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be astute. Well, consider, if you would, the method were to do, look back at 1 John. And notice it says, 
but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Now, I want you to look at 1 John chapter 4, and I want you to say that part of where it says, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Will you say that with me? But try the spirits, whether they are of God. Say that with me. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. I don't think, speaking of being up to date, I don't think that's very hard to understand. And God's given us that principle and that admonition simply to try the spirits. You say, well, how do you do that? You, he keeps saying, try the spirits. How do you try the spirits? If it doesn't line up with the word of God, then you know it's error. But may I submit to you, you have to know the word of God. And therein lies part of the issue we're dealing with in the United States of America. There's not a famine in the land today for the Bible. People, oh, it's a famine, bless God. Well, there's not a famine in the land today for the Bible. The Bible is available everywhere. The famine is the, is, is the uh, lack of of reading of the words of God as Amos brings out. That was a different famine then. Notice in your notes, if you would, go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter number 2. Many false prophets are gone out into the world. As a result, many Christians have gone apostate Second, look at 2 Peter chapter 2. If you've got verse number 1, notice what it says. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in, notice what it says, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Can you imagine? And bring upon themselves swift destruction. I love verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Folks, <laughs> many shall follow their pernicious ways. I'm just trying to help you this morning. Have some discernment. Be attentive. The devil is alive and well. Man is a spiritual creature with, many in, with, with, with an inward desire to worship something, even if it's himself. All of humanity will either worship the true and living God or the gods of their imaginations and the doctrines of religion of our day continue to diversify and grow. Many want some sort of worship that's consistent with his own personal desire. I told the earlier service about a church that was started years ago and the guy just decided to go around and knock on doors, everybody, lost people and saved people included, and say, what would you like to see in a church? And I understand on the surface, I get, that, I get where, where his mind is. Uh, it's in the wrong place. But I don't want to ask an unregenerated man what he wants to see in a church. I'd rather go to God and say, God, I'm going to give an account to you as a minister, as a man of God. I want to know what you want. But you get what you ask for. And we're surrounded by false prophets. Many who seek to spew their poison under the banner of Christ. That's why somebody, that's why millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people will buy a book, My Better Life Now. Well, My Better Life Now, if you even have a casual reading of the Word of God, you'll understand My Better Life isn't now, My Better Life is to come. No, because it's humanism that has morphed into these pulpits across America, but it's a minister that's giving it out, and it's all humanism. What can my, how can my life be better now? What can I, ha what can I, 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 I? Listen, I think God wants you to have a good life. I believe that. An abundant life. I believe that. But I don't believe that God wants us to be able to indulge in some of the things that we'll see in just a minute that are consistent with that ide ideological teaching. Notice if you would, number two in your notes, be astute. Be astute. Being attentive is being on guard, but being astute implies exercising discernment. Look at verse number two in 1 John chapter four. Hereby know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. In verse number two, John reveals the litmus test for truth. A litmus test. Consider the benchmarks. You... It says it in verse 2, you know, 
Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that, that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. If you affirm that Christ came in the flesh, was born of a virgin, died for the sins of humanity, was buried and rose again, it's consistent with God's inspired word. But there's a conflict. And this is what's really interesting. Do you notice verse number three? Look at it. It says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, say the last four words. So, okay, I didn't say it. God did. Some people say that's really harsh and we got to be careful. I think you ought to be careful and I think you ought to have grace and compassion, but you also ought to have discernment and God is telling us to try the spirits. John reveals the attitude many hold contrary to the word of God. There's caution needed in our day. Caution. The great evil as we think about this text in 2 Peter 2 and many false prophets going out into the world. And as a result of that is that apostasy takes place. That, that's the key. That's what happens when, when a false doctrine or a false teaching is, and, and it happens to Christians that I've known, literally I have known somebody who got saved and was semi-grounded but not really grounded, that was, ended up going into uh, Mormonism. And as a result, and listen, let, let me say this. I've had neighbors, neighbors that were more Mormons. Some of the best people I've ever met. Good people. It's the doctrine is the issue. People have a, uh, people get real leery of, well, you know, what about, what about? Because it's not the individual, it's the doctrine. Guess what? They disagree with you. And so you have to have grace with people, but you also have to be real. Notice thirdly in your notes, if you would, be assured, be assured. I'm trying to go through this quickly because I'm hot and um, it's, yeah. First John 4, why? Because all men seek their own. So I'm thinking about how hot I am under these lights. First John chapter 4, notice if it says, if you would, verse number 4, ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is in he that, than you that is in the, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hey folks, listen. That's a comfort. Greater is he, if you're saved, that's in you than he that is in the world. Not a blessing. The comfort is He's greater than our adversary. Life's going to continue to bring struggles, but we can overcome in Christ. You're going to have challenges. Now, their program is found in verse number five. Notice what it says. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Now, stop for just a minute and look up here. That, that in and of itself is very revealing. They are of the world, they speak of the world, and they that are of the world hear them. They embrace, if you will, a certain teaching or a certain philosophy of life. And I'll tell you that humanism plays a major role of what is morphed into uh, Christianity. And it's sad. And that's all about us and not about him. It, last I checked, it's to God be the glory. Not man, to God be the glory. Every so song that's sung in this church, I want God to receive the glory. Not man. Every Sunday school class, every teacher, every preacher, somebody says, well, that was a good song or that was a good message. Inside you say, Lord, thank you. I'm glad it was a blessing to somebody because we don't want to rob God of his glory that is rightfully his. In closing... There are many voices vying for our attention these days. They just are. Many voices. As you think of Psalm 1, it says this, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You notice it doesn't say it, he doesn't hear the counsel of the ungodly. By Monday, all of us may hear some form of ungodly counsel or a philosophy of something. We may hear that. Blessed is the man that walketh not of the counsel of the ungodly. You may hear it, but if you're grounded and you're rooted in the word of God and you're not blown about by every wind of doctrine, then you're not going to heed the counsel of the ungodly. And so that's important. Everyone believes something. And many seek to influence us with the, 
uh, with their modern theology, likely more than ever, we need spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment. Jesus Christ, I'll say it again, is the source of truth. When Pilate looked at him and said, what is truth? To me, that's one of the most comical questions in all of the Bible. You're looking truth in the face, and you're saying, what is truth? Jesus Christ is truth. He is the way of salvation. He's the way to eternal life. May I encourage you today? Be vigilant for such a time as this. Folks, you need to be sober. You need to be vigilant. You need to try the spirits. Exercise spiritual discernment. I want to encourage you to do that. You can do that by being attentive, by being astute. It will help you. And so you're on guard. That's the term sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You say, well, not me, not my family. The devil wants your children and he wants your marriage ended. Can I say that? Because he hates the church. He hates the family. And so therefore he'll do what he can. Fathers, husbands, be diligent, be astute, be sober, and be on guard. So to the Christian, I ask this, are you exercising spiritual discernment? Are you allowing certain spirits to enter into your home? And I don't ever get into, uh, and I've traveled enough overseas to know, and you talk to some guys in Fiji or guys in other areas that are in the, in the jungles with, with folks, there, there's all kinds of spirits that they deal with on the foreign field. Somebody, somebody asked, well, why isn't there as much demon possession in America as there is in some foreign countries? I think one of the main reasons is because uh, regardless of what has been stated that this is no longer a Christian nation, I think that's a joke. This is still founded on the Word of God. And I would say to you, there's millions of Christians in this country. Millions. Millions. But I think one of the reasons we may not have the demon possession, maybe like you would see in other parts of the world, is because of the salt that's still here. Because of the Word of God. And because of the Christians. But, uh, but they're spirits, no doubt. And they'll do whatever they can to get you off track and to get us off track. So to the Christian I ask, are you exercising spiritual discernment? Are you trying the spirits? Are you being vigilant? And to those who may not know the Lord, I ask this. Where will you spend eternity? Do you know Christ as your Savior? If not, I encourage you to trust Him as your Savior today. In the earlier service, we had three professions of faith. People that said, preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. But if you could know it, I'd like to know it. Maybe you're here today and you don't know the Lord. Maybe you're here today and down deep you say, preacher, I'm not sure if I died today that I'd go to heaven. And God spoke to my heart today from his word. This wasn't a salvation message. But I'll say this to those that are here that may not know the Lord. Christ died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again for your salvation and for your justification. And the way to heaven, they sang it this morning, and there is one path, and it is a narrow way, and it is through the blood. Because the blood is what paid for your sins. But you have to receive it. you got to receive it. And maybe you're here today and you say, I've always believed it, but I've never received it. My prayer is today that you'll receive the finished work of Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let's pray.